Uh, I think it was a great match again. Uh, we both struggled, I think, physically a lot, uh, especially in the, in the first set, set and a half. Very humid um, conditions, just sweating a lot and, you know, reaching the towel basically after more or less after every point. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, the, the first set was, was 6 1, but I think in terms of the, the time uh, played, it was almost an hour. Um, um, then, you know, in the second set, I felt like he started, he started playing, playing better, missing less, uh, hitting, hitting uh, his serves, uh, hitting the spots better. Um, but in the crucial moments, I guess I managed to just uh, stay tough and, and find the right shots, make him play always an extra shot, uh, make him run. You know, I know that he, on the move, he's not really the most comfortable. Um, so I, I think I think I've done well, you know, except you know a few few games here and there where where I struggled, but you know a very solid performance, and um, I'm I'm really pleased with the way I played. Thank you very much. Congratulations once again. Thank you. Name and affiliation in English. We have a big room. One question, and then we will go to Serbian. One question, Richard. Richard Osborne, USOpen.org. Congrats on the win. Um, after some of your slam victories in the past, you thanked your team for kind of putting up with you for a couple of weeks because you can be difficult to be around. I wondered if you just elaborate. On Who is that not? A little bit. <laughs> What's that? Who is not? Who's not? <laughs> I mean, but you can get pretty intense behind the scenes. Yeah, I mean, look, um, I care about this. Uh, this profession and and uh, I take it very very seriously. So um, I know that a lot of the other players do do too. And you know we expect the highest kind of dedication and and um, I guess involvement from our team members, uh, as our team members and coaching staff expect from us. So the intensity is there uh, in the heat of the battle. Obviously, a lot of different things can be done on the court, but. Uh, you know, overall, we are a team. We're sticking together through good times, bad times, and you know, I'm grateful that I have the team that I have. And you know, we've had some tremendous success in the last, especially in the last couple of years. So, you know, I'm pleased with where I stand. And uh, you know, yeah, I can be difficult, but who is not? Again, you know, I, I don't know the player playing on on the highest level that is, you know, easy going, and you know, everything is, uh, so to say, flowers and and. And, and music, you know, it has to be uh, challenging for everyone, for the player and for the coaching staff. Um, otherwise, there is no growth, you know. I think that's that's the way to, to push each other to, to the limits and really understand how you can develop the game, how you can become better on and off the court. Okay. Matt. Hey, now, Matt Gardner, the New York Times. Uh, you're known for always finding another way to motivate yourself. Um, you're playing an American today, obviously on home soil. You're going to play another one on Friday. It's been a long time since you were playing Americans this in this place, uh, this deep in the deep tournament. Deep in the tournament, yeah. Yeah, I'm, one, I, I'm curious about what that, what role that plays in terms of motivation for you. Well, I mean, today it was, it was a great test, you know, to see how, how it feels being on the court and <clears throat> quarterfinals against uh, you know, top American and you know, Taylor has been playing some great tennis this tournament I thought uh, but you know I I was very determined I, I knew I had clarity on what I need to be doing on the court um, and of course you know in a heat of a moment sometimes you know you want to uh, use that energy to lift yourself up and sometimes you just want to kind of cocoon yourself and uh, and uh, really isolate the noise and, and focus on on breathing and focus on on the you know staying present and focusing on the next point so it's really um, adapting to whatever circumstances have for you and whatever it's required in that moment for you, you know sometimes I, I just like to uh, you know not really pay attention on what's going uh, on on the stands um, uh, but and then some. But sometimes I want to respond, and I want to feed off that energy, you know. Um, and so that's that was that's what was happening today. That was the case. I think, you know, a crowd got into it. Um, I think
think, um, yeah, midway third set, you would say, or end of, and you know, last maybe four or five games, they really got into it. Taylor actually played great, um, and you know, we we pushed each other toe to toe. So I really didn't want him to uh, to win the third set because you know, then I guess the crowd would really get into it even more. It will become uh, it would become more difficult uh, task for me, you know, to to handle because you know, it's normal, it's logical to expect that the, the most of the crowd will support the home player, and, and that's probably going to be the case on Friday. But I'll be ready for it. Howard, Novak, <clears throat> Howard Fenrich with the Associated Press. <clears throat> uh, I've heard you say a few times this year that hey, I'm 36, the body doesn't necessarily react the way it used to or recover the way it used to. I'm wondering, what about your mind in that way? And is it a similar type process for you, the mental and emotional mm. recovery as the physical? And how do you uh, take care of those, especially by this point in a long season? I would just say it's different, you know. Um, I said I said not in a way that recovery is... Um, more difficult nowadays than it was 10 years ago. It's just, it's different. Uh, and I have to have a, a, a pro approach that is different from what it was 10 years ago. I have to adapt to my, you know, to my life and changes. I'm a father of, you know, two children. A lot of things are happening off the court that uh, are obviously part of my life that affects me in one way or another. And, uh, you know, my mental state, my emotional state. So. Uh, you know, I need to know how to handle all of these things and create a formula that works. Um, so, so far, so good. I must say that, you know, I have uh, uh, really <clears throat> a lot of people around me, um, you know, in terms of the medical, you know, uh, fitness and uh, physiotherapy, kinesiology, to, uh, you know, aspect to, to make sure that my body is in, uh, you know, recovered and is in shape in order to compete at the highest level uh, and um, yeah as I said you know mentally there there's probably a lot more that I'm dealing with um, in my private life than it was the case 10 years ago um, so but that's the beauty of life you know it, things are evolving and moving on and um, I just I feel that there's um, there's always um, I guess uh, an extra gear that you have inside of you and you can find when you dig deep um, to, to handle, uh, you know, and manage energy levels um, on and off the court. If you're really devoted to that and if you care about it, if you pay attention to that um, mental aspect as much as physical, of course, because um, um, for quite a few years, actually, mental training was um, not really talked about much uh, generally in the tennis world and and I you know mental health uh, is is a subject that is quite uh, talked about in the last I would say three four years which which I'm glad you know uh, it, it needs to be out there it needs to be you know addressed in a proper way so that the players have uh, proper understanding of what they are going through and then have help and you know uh, guidance, um, necessary guidance for them to overcome certain obstacles because you know, in the end of the day, we're also people that are uh, also hand, you know, have to deal with the private issues that everyone has. Uh, but then on that high level uh, of individual sport, um, <laughs> a lot of things and relationships with your close ones can affect uh, how you feel on a decisive point. You know, uh, and th that's why it's so so important to address everything holistically, multidisciplinary, so to say, uh, because then you you will um, just be more prepared. You will have more tools uh, that you can use in a given moment. Really, Willie Weinbaum from ESPN. One thing you haven't addressed is how the fun is for you at this stage compared to all these other semifinals you've reached, and what your thoughts are on facing perhaps Francis Tiafo or Shelton? Could you repeat the first question? Sure. How, how the, was fun. How the fun. How the fun <laughs> that you're experiencing yeah. at this stage after all these semifinals yeah. compare with all the previous and then your thoughts well, on who you're facing in the next round? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to enjoy the, the, the moments on the court, but there's so much... <laughs> 
stress and, and pressure going on that it's, it's, it's um, hard to have fun, so to say, on the court. Really, it's about uh, finding a way to navigate through the match and, and win a tennis match for me, you know. But um, off the court, in terms of the, the, the actual journey of still being a professional tennis player and, and, and going around the world, traveling with, uh, with my coaching team, you know, we try to keep things light off the court and have fun and enjoy, enjoy life because in the end of the day, you have to find that optimal balance for each one of us. It's, it's different, obviously, it's quite individual. Um, and in terms of my next opponent, again, it's going to be an American player for sure and um, I have to be ready for, for a great battle and, uh, um, you know, both of the guys that I, uh, I'm going to face Eventually on Friday, uh, Shelton and Tiafo have a lot of charisma. They bring a lot of energy on the court. They're very quick, very powerful. I mean, Ben Shelton has been serving some bombs this tournament. Uh, you know, when his serve is on, he's he's very difficult player to play against, especially because he's lefty as well. Um, and then you have uh, the big foe who is, you know, uh, uh, one of the favorite guys in the locker room, you know, uh, fun to be around, always smiling, always bringing good vibes uh, and fantastic player. You know, he's played uh, semis US Open last year here, beat Nadal in quarters and had a great run. Uh, and he thrives. He's a kind of both actually those players thrive on on the energy of the of the crowd, of the center court. It kind of gets them going and they play their best. So uh, it's going to be fun to watch them tonight. I think it's going to be, you know, Quite close match. I mean, uh, the way they're both playing pretty well, and uh, yeah, I look forward to it. You know, I have a couple of days off, uh, no match, so it, it actually serves well uh, for my body at this stage of the tournament, and I'll be ready for Friday. Whoever is across the net. All right, we have time Thanks. for just one more in English, Brian. Brian Pony, Associated Press. Uh, you mentioned the crowd getting more into it as in the third set. Looked like there was a point where he, the game, you broke you, where you kind of lost your concentration and, and froze. You were tracking the ball and it just landed somewhere where you could have had it. Did, did a fan yell, distract you? Yeah, yeah, it did. He did. <laughs> <laughs> he was actually, he was actually in the box uh, where some of my friends were. So I don't know who the guy was, but. Yeah, I was pretty annoyed by him at that point. Uh, so I was communicating with my friends to have a little chat with him. Are you seeing more of that happen, Novak, where Medvedev is complaining the other night that people are cheering between first and second? Sorry. I mean, look, it happens, you know, and, and sometimes you react, but most of the times you don't. I mean, I speak, you know, for myself. Obviously, there's 90 whatever percent of the time you don't react. I mean, people speak, they move around. Um, you got to be ready for that, particularly in U.S. Open, um, especially in the night sessions. It, it just, you know, that's part of it. It's part of the sport. And I don't, you know, mostly I don't mind it. But, you know, in those important moments when you are all of a sudden, you know, under a lot of stress and you're facing a break point and then uh, all of a sudden everything annoys you um, and distracts you. So then then you react. Uh, but that's again, that's that's heat of heat of the moment and playing on the highest level, you know. Crowd, I'm actually glad that crowd wants to get into it because it, it, you know, it means that the the match is interesting, that they want to be part of it, um, and that they are having fun. So, at the end of the day, they pay tickets to come and watch you play. So we try to put on a show and perform for them, so they go back home, you know. Satisfied that they've they've been here and, and enjoyed uh, enjoy their day. You know, so sometimes you might have an <laughs> interaction with the player, <laughs> you know, like this guy today. I'm sorry for him, but uh, he was really annoying at that point. And uh, and that's it. You know, that it, it happens.